time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What My Line, brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the world's number one electric shaver, the Remington. Now, let's all play What My Line. Let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. In this happy season, everyone is waiting for Santa Claus, but all settled for the man who sits on my left, Mr. Fred Allen. Viewed with the spirit of Christmas, a certain real estate dealer named Ed Schellenberg has given each member of our panel one square foot of land down in Delray Beach, Florida. And now, ladies and gentlemen, may I present the only young lady in television who has three feet, two feet here in New York, and one foot down in Delray Beach, Miss Arlene Francis. A few more feet and I'd make it. <laughs> and now the gentleman that you're going to meet is the publisher of those marvelous landmark books for children. Remember that for Christmas and remember Bennett Surf. And it's my privilege to introduce our panel moderator, one of the most brilliant and one of the very finest gentlemen on television, Mr. John Daly. Well, <clears throat> good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again, tonight, we're up to our old tricks, and we're not going to make the panel put their blindfolds on, for which I probably will get some large thanks after the program's <laughs> over. We'll have some very interesting occupations, and we think we're going to give them a rough night of it even without extra blindfolds. We'll have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later on, but I think it's time for these experts of ours now to meet our first challenger whose line has to be spotted. So would you sign in, please, ma'am? Catherine... Catherine Farrell, is that right? <laughs> and is it Miss or Mrs? Miss. Miss Farrell. Yes. And where are you from? Uh, New York, just now. You're living in New York yes. now. Oh, fine. I catch a, catch a bit of a Scotch accent, don't yes. I? Well, I have a bit of a Scotch accent, but I won't dare use it with you. Tell you what, we do like to let the panel get uh, a close look at you, because it might help them decide what it is you do. So would you walk down in front of the panel for me, please? Are you really Scotch, Miss Farrell? Yes. Yes. Hi. Miss Farrell, how are you? First scotch I've ever seen with no chaser. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Farrell, will you come over here and sit down with me and let me be your chaser, if you will? Now, I wonder if you're familiar with our scoring system, are you? Yes. If you're familiar with the scoring system, then let's let the folks at home and our friends here in the theater with us know exactly what your line is. Panel, Miss Farrell is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with the chaser, Fred Allen. <laughs> uh, Miss Farrell, do you perform a service of some kind? Yes. You do. Is it some service that I might use? Yes. You could. She doesn't seem to be convincing, John. Well, I can understand Miss Farrell's reservations. I have a picture in my mind, too. Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, if I took advantage of these services, would they improve me in some way? Yes. They would. I will let that affirmative answer stand. Very nice of you, John. There'll be some question as to whether or not I should have when it's all undone. Uh, you're interrupting my silence, John. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, well, let me see. Uh, it would improve me, you say? Yes. Would it improve me from uh, the neck up? No. It wouldn't. No. That's one down and nine to go. It wouldn't improve me from the neck up. I, uh, I, uh, oh, well, I, that's, I, that's where you need the improvement. I'll agree with you there, but... 
I was hoping that she had the solution, John. I, uh... Now, actually, Fred, I'm loath to give you a full no answer to it, but well, I... I meant my appearance. I mean, from the neck up, my general appearance. Well, it appearance. would not have necessarily a direct bearing on your appearance, specifically from the neck up. It might, in the overall picture, improve your appearance, though, and I think we still have to let the no stand. I'm May sorry. I ask you a question, John? Yes, Mr. Allen. Do you think uh, aggressiveness is out of place in a midget? <laughs> It has nothing to do with things in general, but I mean, I... He's not going to answer that question. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll, I'll, take my, I'll put my, my, uh, fifth, my $5 sign down. <laughs> Fred. Now, that's one down and nine to go, Mr. I was Fred. a little confused. I meant my general appearance. You did? All, all right. I'm... You're fighting so hard, no, you I get know, it I back. I don't want it. I not don't want done. it. You can go on. I, I will agree that uh, I think the question could have been taken generally, so you continue. No, I... Uh, no, I, I won't take it, John. Even in this Christmas, <laughs> you put me in another bracket with that $5. I don't know. All right. No, now I lost fairly. I'm, we'll you're right. We'll two cards for delayed time. How's that? That's right. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francie. Are your services used by both men and women, Miss Farrell? Yes. Do they enjoy your services? Yes. Uh, do you touch the people that you come in contact with? Yes. Uh... Is that the main part of your work, the business of your touching them? Well, rather than giving really advice, really. rather than it being a mental job. Now, never yeah. mind. We've just say, been through one of job? these. No, Miss, we've just been through one of these ringers now. No, no, I do mean, it's, is, is your work more physical than mental? May I put it that way, Mr. Daly? No, because that still gets you off the hook. We'll have to go back to the original question, which is the, is the touching the basic, the contact, the basic part of her work. Is that All what right, you mean? All right, Mr. Daly. Is that what you mean? It isn't what I meant, but I'm going to let you go and have your way. Oh, it's a rough <laughs> night. It's a rough night, isn't it? What do we do with it? You want to let it go as a yes or a no? Turn over 250 if you can. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. There is physical contact necessary, I think, in almost all cases in the performance of the service. To that degree, you are correct and you please all continue. Right. May I ask, Miss Farrell, if you wear something other than the clothes you are wearing now in your job? Small conference. <laughs> From work. Let's she wears here. scotch tape. <laughs> <laughs> She's stuck with it if she does. <laughs> Hooting. No. Actually, this, um, we want to be very fair. Since oh, when? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the spirit is really gone. Three seven to go. <laughs> Mr. Sir. We're, we're making progress very slowly, I would say. Miss Farrell, when you uh, deal with these men and women, are they in any position other than absolutely upright? <laughs> Are they in any position other than absolutely upright? The answer would be no. That would be four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, do they move or wiggle around? It might be necessary under circum certain circumstances to wiggle around, I guess, yes. would it? Mm -hmm. Are they on dry land rather than water? Uh, are they on dry land? Is that your question? Yes, yes I'd say they're on yeah. dry land. Yeah. Is there some reason why Miss Farrell is so hesitant, or is that just part of the game? It's um, hard to find dry land anymore. <laughs> 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 now, it's been raining heavily, you see, where she is lately. Do you work indoors rather than out of doors? Yes, indoors. So these are people who consult you indoors on dry land. <laughs> could could well, men and women come together to do what they do? Yes. Could more than two come at once? Yes. <laughs> do they ever do anything like nip-ups or bending and stretching or anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> no. no, five dollars, five to go. Mr. Allen, I'm going to give you one more. Well, is there a product involved in what you do? Mm -hmm. There is a product. Mm -hmm. uh, is this is something that's edible? Is it edible? <laughs> is it edible? <laughs> no. No, that's six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Is the product ever put on the person? Yes. Would it be any form of apparel? No. Uh, small quarter. <laughs> Maybe if you can't eat it, you can... Yes. Ah! <laughs> we've just made it wearable. 
Uh, is it something that would be worn from the neck down? No. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Francis doesn't mean all the way from the neck. It means somewhere below the neck. <laughs> that be yes. Somewhere below the neck. Yes. Uh, if, I, uh, if I had one on, is it possible that you could not see it? If you were wearing it now, is it possible we couldn't see it? I would think so, wouldn't you? Yes. yes, I should think so. Well, mm -hmm. then it is worn underneath the dress or the suit? Uh, no, that is makes it, it seven down and three is to it, go. Uh, is it anything that is particularly scotch, like a kilt or something like that? <laughs> I, think, um, I think, Bennett, you know now that you have the product. Now, what does Miss Farrell have to do with a kilt? Well, uh... This is, this, is, this is going to kilt me. <laughs> uh, does she make kilts? She makes kilts, that's right. <laughs> and I want you to know that Miss Farrell says that she makes them for both men and women, and the men like theirs a little shorter. Now, there's a shocking uh -huh. business for you, but Miss Farrell, you gave them so much trouble, we're going to flip all the cards anyway, and our thanks for being a very interesting is, guest on one of my Mr. Daly, lives. we yes. must ask this one question before Miss Farrell goes. Do men wear anything under kilts or don't they? Do men wear anything under those kilts or don't they? <laughs> yes, Do that them. takes care of everything. Thank you very much, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was a bit involved, panel, but you did very well, I think. <laughs> Let's see if we can't stuck you with a second challenger. Would the next challenger sign in, please? Kevin? Kevin Hanlon. And? Friends. And friends. How do you do? <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Hanlon, where are your friends? Oh, they're right here. Well, will the friends come in, please? Fine. Just stand here with me. <laughs> Great company. Where are you from? Uh, Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Will you, since you were the one who made the signature, walk down and let the panel have a close look at you? Will your friends please come Hi. with me? Hello, Mr. Hanlon. Hanlon, how are you? Hello, Mr. Hanlon. All right, Mr. Hanlon, if you'll come over here and sit down next to me now. Do you know our scoring system, sir? We'll get back yes. to zero. If yes. you do, then uh, let's let our friends at home and our audience here know exactly what your lines are. Guest, all of these gentlemen have basically the same line. Uh, Mr. Hannon will be their spokesman, as he was the man who signed in for all of them. I will tell you that he's salaried. This is true of all of his friends. And we'll begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Oh, do you have anything to do with amusement or entertainment? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Do you work for a profit-making organization? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Do you work for some branch of the government? Yes. Yes. Is it the federal government? Mm-hmm. Do you all work in Washington? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. You work for the federal government, but not all in Washington. Are you, would you call yourselves operatives? Yes, sir. No, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mr. Hanlon. I may be wanted in Washington, the foreign... <laughs> You use the word operatives, and Benefit, I think the connotation will be clear to us. Uh, we hope I that mean that they operate at something. You mean that they operate something? Well, that's fine. We'll give you to no know anyway. That's four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you do your work both indoors and outdoors? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Are we in some trouble, John? No, you're doing fine. No, I'm the one that's in trouble. You are, Dorothy. Do you have anything to do with the executive branch of the government? Yes. Do you have anything to do with the president? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Allen. Does the president have anything to do with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, yes, yes, the president yes, does yes. have something to do with him. Uh, do you have... Uh, 
I, I, I know what I want to say, but I can't express myself, John. If I had somebody from the Adams family here, I know I'd... <laughs> Do you uh, uh, function as pages or messengers of some sort? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Do each of you work in the same position in different states of the Union? No. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Surf. Are you gentlemen members of the United States Armed Forces? Yes. Are all of you in the same branch of service? Yes. You look like pilots, are you? No. Eight down and two to go, Miss Kilgallen. Oh, dear. Uh, well, you wear uniforms, so yes. usually. Do you all participate in the same type of thing? Yes. You're not one crew, are you? Yes. Oh, you are one crew. Well, bye, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Miss Kilgallen passes, Mr. Allen. I wasn't passing. I just got a no because I asked it the wrong way. You said they're all in one crew, and the answer was yes. Yes, they're, in the, they're, they're all in the same boat if they're with the Navy, probably. <laughs> well, well are you in mm -hmm. one crew that goes okay. off the ground? Goes off no. the ground? Please, now, let's see, no help for the moderator. Are you all in one crew that goes off the ground? Yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. Well, do you go off the ground in the sense that you go into water? Yes. Do you ever go below water? Yes. Are you a submarine crew? Yes. Yes! <laughs> I want you to meet, panel, the entire crew of the submarine X-1. Oh, oh is it? Oh, thrilling. And now, <laughs> Lieutenant, Lieutenant Kevin Hanlon, will you introduce your crew, please, sir? Uh, Chief Malone Jones, Chief First uh, Electrician's Mate uh, Jack Roberts, uh, Engineman Philip Thompson, and Engineman Charles Annabelle. Congratulations to a fine group of men. Let's start. Don't you ever get claustrophobia? Do you ever get claustrophobia? No. No. Not yet. Not yet. Submariners don't seem to. Want it. I would say this is the first of the midget submarines, yes, is it sir. not, sir? Yes, sir. And you use it now to test harbor defenses right. and right. tactical stuff that you're working out. Well, you're trailblazers in the United States Navy, and it's good to have you all with us. Thanks a lot for coming. Right. I think and they're on the wrong show. They ought to be on Down You Go. <laughs> oh, oh. On that happy note, we'll flip the rest of the cards and thank you, <laughs> Lieutenant, right. and your thank crew you for being with us. Good to have you. Thank you. We'll, we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here's Dick Stark. It happens every day in your own hometown. A man starts to pass the store window, stops, looks in, and there before him is the way to a cleaner, faster shave. Now, this is what he sees. A man-sized Remington electric shaver. One look at the business end of a Remington, and you can see why you'll get a cleaner, faster shave. You just can't miss with three shaving heads. And only Remington has three shaving heads to give you a cleaner, faster shave as easy as one Two, three. You just can't miss with the Remington because each of those shaving heads passes over your face one after the other to take every whisker off clean and close. Why, a single stroke with this man-sized Remington shaves you better than half a dozen strokes with a shaver with only one or two small, narrow heads. You know, the Remington shaves so clean, it can actually shave the short, close fuzz off a peach without ever harming its tender skin. Now here you see the guard has been removed so that you can really see that peach fuzz fall. And there is proof that the Remington will give you a clean shave. But of course the real proof is on your own face, on your own beard. So here's what I wish you'd do. Stop in at your nearest Remington dealer, pick up a Remington, take it home. Take it home on the 14-day free trial plan. You'll find most dealers offer that plan. And be sure you bring in your old standard make electric shaver. It's worth $7.50 as a trade-in. Now, I want to make you a promise. No matter what your present shaving method, be it wet or dry, you will get a cleaner, faster shave with the man-sized Remington electric shaver. What's more, you'll learn for yourself why 
Remington has made and sold more than 15 million electric shavers, more than any other make. And now we come to the special feature of our show, the appearance of our mystery celebrity for which my friends on the panel are blindfolded. The blindfolds are all in place, panel? Yes, yes Mr. Daniel. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You will ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise, and let's begin all with Arlene Francis. Are you a performer? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Surf? Are you a female performer? Yes. Miss Gilgallum? Are you a singer? Are you a singer? One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Are you appearing in the show that's currently on Broadway? <laughs> Miss Francis? Are you a comedian? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say this, uh, Miss Arlene. Our guest can play comedy or tragedy or you name it, and she can do it, and better than most, too. Good, good. <laughs> Mr. Sir? Are you the star of the show in which you are appearing? Do you wear any armor? Do you wear any what? Mr. Armor. Do you wear any armor in the show in which you are? No. Mr. Allen? You're not Julie Harris. <laughs> no. No, she wears armor. No, not Miss Julie Harris. Miss Francis? Um, are you co-starred in this play with two other people? <laughs> Mr. Sir? Is your voice usually a wonderfully husky one? I will answer that yes. Yes, it must be Maggie Sullivan. Oh. Maggie Sullivan is <laughs> I think we ought to... You couldn't uh, hide the huskiness, Maggie. <laughs> no, but you did it's pretty good. I know, I could just squeak and go away down. Maggie, the squeak was wonderful, but I think that's second I think we should it. mention that the name of the play is Janice, and that you are enchanting in it, oh, and that it's a big hit. I think we ought to have mentioned all those things. That's really <laughs> lovely. Thank you. One thing that I lost um, signal on, I know that, uh, well, shucks, let's just flip cards. I'm in a card-flipping mood that you want us to do something special with this, and I didn't find out what it was. Yes, I wanted to go to the Seeing Eye, which is at Morristown, New Jersey. Right, ma'am, we will see that it does go to the Seeing Eye, and we thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Margaret Sullivan, panel, you cleaned that up very quickly. In fact, you cleaned it up so quickly that I'm going to take a precious 30 seconds to say a few words because I've got some New Year's resolutions I want people to make. This is kind of selfish, I suppose, but we've recently started cooperating here in New York to keep our city clean. And actually, some of my friends are thinking about a national campaign along these lines. And I just want to suggest that with the New Year that we uh, get a slogan, say, a cleaner America is up to all of us, and then keep our own communities clean. It's done wonderful work here in New York already, and I'm a little tired of people coming from overseas and telling us that our cities are dirty. So New Year's resolution for all of you. Help keep your cities clean, use the litter baskets, and don't throw things around. Now I'll throw another challenger at the panel. Will you come in and sign in, please? Sign in, won't you? Richard? Herdick, is that right? Oh, yes, All right, uh, Mr. Herdick, where are you from? New York. Will you look at the panel? That's all right, bear up, come with me. <laughs> all right, Mr. Herdick, we're a little short of time, so I'll ask you if you know how we score things. Yes. Good, then let's let our friends at home, friends in the theater, know exactly what your line is. You have about two minutes to see if you can figure out what Mr. Herdick, what it is Mr. Herdick does. He is salaried, and we'll begin the questioning with Bennett Cerf. Well, Mr. Herdick, you have a real, rather lean and hungry look. Are you in show business? 
No, sir. That's one thousand. Thank you go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you work for a profit-making organization? No, ma'am. Two down a date to go, Mr. Allen. Do you work for some branch of the government? No, sir. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Well, do you work for any branch of the park departments? Yes, ma'am. No, 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 to the LP top, small conference. How can there be confusion about parks? <laughs> no, small ma parks. No, ma'am. That <laughs> makes it four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, do you wear a uniform, Mr. Hardy? Yes, sir. Is it a uniform that would be generally recognized by people? Yes, sir. Is it blue? No, sir. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it more light than dark? No, ma'am. That makes it six down and four to go, Mr. Allen. Is your work confined to the outdoors? Do you work yes. outdoors exclusively? Good deal. No. Well, a good deal, Fred. I would say he does a lot of outdoor work. Does he have any implements that uh, help him with his work in the yes. outdoors? Yes, he uses some implements. <laughs> <laughs> Are these implements confined to the activity that uh, takes place in the street? No. <laughs> no. And I know what you're after. That's seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Do you have anything to do with animals? Yes, ma'am. You do? Yes, ma'am. And you have implements, but it isn't confined to the street. Well, my dear, this well, is animals... going to be difficult. Are they large animals? Yes. Are they larger than a cow? No. <laughs> <laughs> and with this happy thought that the, oh, the, what is it that the hippopotamus is not larger than a zoo. cow, what? yes, Mr. Hedrick works at the zoological gardens, and he is but the hippopotamus keeper. No, it isn't. Isn't a, a hippopotamus larger than a cow? The group oh, I yes, know of. It all depends on which cow you have in mind. And, and which hippopotamus you have in mind. Oh, you're pretty we out of time. Mr. Hedrick, thanks very much. We had a lot of fun. Nice to have you We'll be back in just a moment, but first, here's a word from Dick Stark. It's clean, it's fast. The Remington Peach of a Shave. Yes, a clean shave up to eight times faster than with any other shaving method, wet or dry. Compare the man-sized Remington with old-style electric shavers. Only Remington has three extra-long diamond-honed shaving heads, so you get a faster shave and a cleaner shave, too. Get the only shave that's both clean and fast. Get the man-sized Remington peach of a shave. Before our panel says goodnight, may I remind you to tune in again next Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when once again we invite you to play What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listing for the date and time of our weekly series. Can you guess this man's line? It took his skill to put manpower in a man's deodorant. Of course, it's world-famous Dr. Jules Montagnier, creator of new Mr. Stopette for men. With more power, more manpower to stop odor, check perspiration all day, yet it can't harm clothes. No matter how often you shower, how often you change shirts, you just can't get along with anything less than Mr. Stopette. So stop snitching your wife's deodorant, get new Mr. Stopette. And I don't remember, we're all going to keep our towns cleaner. And with that happy thought, until next week, good night, Miss Dorothy. If you hadn't given that commercial about keeping our towns cleaner, we would have gotten the hippopotamus man. Good night, Fred. Good night, Dorothy. I have a slogan for you, jo uh, for you John. Keep your city pretty. Oh, <laughs> very good. Good night, Arlene. Good night. Good night, you baby hippopotamus. But quest for I'm going to send you a book showing you the size of a hippopotamus. Good night, <laughs> John. Thank, thank you, Bennett Surf, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Life. Travel arrangements on What's My Line are made through American Airlines. American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagships. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Cotman production in association with the CBS Television Network.